Sutherland creation was founded in Buffalo. It was 1987. Then you moved to Florida. Why? To be closer uh, as such bands as Decide or Morbid Angel or? Uh, no, not at all because uh, 1987 we formed in Buffalo and we moved to uh, Florida in 1988 because uh, I had some problems with uh, the law in uh, New York and um, I had some family. What kind of problems? Sorry. I was a bad kid, <laughs> and uh, it was uh, advised to my family that I should move <laughs> out of the state of New York or I would be, go to jail. <laughs> so um, me and my friends, uh, we moved to Florida because I had uh, some family uh, in Florida, you know, and they owned a restaurant and stuff, and some of the, me and the guys moved to Florida and got jobs and uh, you know after high school we lived in Florida and uh, then we had found out about bands like Deicide and Obituary and Morbid Angel so uh, you know we moved there on our own because we we weren't happy with New York anyways the music scene was kinda you mm -hmm. know wasn't so good so we moved to Florida mm -hmm. a lot of good-looking women there <laughs> In the end of the 80s, you signed a deal with Roadrunner Records. The first effect of this cooperation was the Ten Commandments. Would you tell me something more about this debut album? Well, you know, it was our first album. You know, we were pretty young, you know, young kids. And, uh, you know, it was real exciting for us to, you know, go into a um, good recording studio with the good producer and record an album. I mean, uh, it, we had a lot of fun recording it, but then there was a lot of stress too because, you know, it was our first record and we didn't have a lot of time, but, you know, the end result, you know, we're happy with it, you know, we we're, we're, you know, young kids, you know, we were like 19 years old, so it was, uh, for us, it was great. Mm -hmm. What new possibilities did you get after signing to Roadrunner? Well, I mean, we were able to tour you know, around the world, uh, because we had a record out, you know, an international release, and we were able to tour the United States and Mexico and, uh, you know, Europe, you know, for our first record. So it was, uh, you know, it was a great opportunity for us, you know, to play around the world and, you know, uh, make new fans and new friends and, you know, meet new bands and stuff. So it was, it was really great. Retribution was the second album for Roadrunner. Yeah, well, yeah, so uh, at, at that time we were a, a lot more prepared too, you know, I mean, we actually recorded the whole album, like recorded it, mixed it, and mastered it in like six days, and, you know, most people think that it's uh, one of our best records, you know, uh, to us, we did, we wrote the songs, nine songs in one month, and, you know, we were really, at that time, we were, we were a tight band, and, uh, you know, the album came together really easy, and, uh, you know, like I said, a lot of people still, uh, you know, think it's one of our best records, and uh, to this day we still play a lot of the songs from the album, and so, uh, yeah, we're, re we're really happy about the record, you know. We, we never know how the songs are going to come out, <laughs> so, you know, we, it was good. Mm -hmm. Stillborn was the end of the cooperation with Roadrunner Records. Why? Well, by the time we got we went to record the album. Roadrunner had wanted us to get into the studio actually pretty fast and at that time we were having a lot of problems especially with our singer you know and, uh, and uh, our drummer at the time and uh, it was a really tough experience doing this album because we, we, we did it with a producer that was not really a death metal you know, producer and uh, we it kind of produced the record ourselves you know it was really it was really hard. Our vocalist was, you know, was not, wasn't really into, you know, into the band anymore. He was, his voice was terrible. I mean, it was like, uh, you know, it took a long time to do the album, and in the end result was, we, you know, you could tell that it wasn't the same band that recorded the first two records. Mm -hmm. You know, you could tell that the intensity was being lost and. And Roadrunner Records told, you know, after they heard the record, they, they wanted us to go back and redo the whole album, or at least redo all the vocals because they were so bad, you know, they just, they lacked, you know, the intensity of the first two records. And, uh, you know, our singer didn't want nothing to do with it and refused to, re, you know, redo the vocals and uh, Roadrunner Records dropped us after that. They released the record and they cut off the band, you know, and uh, I don't blame them because the album, to me, really, I was really disappointed because we worked so hard for so many years and then 
you know, have you know, two of the guys in the band just really didn't care about the band anymore or the music. So you know, it kind of showed on that album. But uh, you know, the, we had, some of the songs are really good, and hopefully uh, in the future we're going to re-record them, you know, with better production and uh, better vocalists. So <laughs> we'll see what happens. After releasing Stillborn, Malevolent Creation was vanished from the music market. Uh, you returned in 1995 with Eternal album. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, after reevaluating, you know, our situation, uh, we were gonna, you know, we fired our singer finally after we did a tour with him. It was just, it was apparent, you know, that this wasn't gonna work out anymore, and we were really becoming a really, you know, shitty band. And uh, we had uh, we had thought about replay, you know, auditioning vocalists, but we really couldn't think of anybody that we, uh, you know, wanted to do this. So uh, our bass player at the time, Jason Blackowitz, took over on the vocals, and we replaced uh, our drummer with Dave Colross, who was, uh, you know, for us was a you know breath of fresh air. He was a great young drummer, and uh, you know he brought brought a lot more fire back into the band. And to us, you know, the Eternal album, we really wanted to put out another record that was really intense and you know musically you know it's a really intense record that for the for 1995 you know we were we were uh, really happy with uh, the way the music came out and you know I mean for our first time on vocals you know I thought Jason did a pretty good job and you know we toured a lot for that record we did like two US tours two European tours we did some shows in South America and stuff like that and uh, you know it was a good record for us to get back into it you know, a lot of people liked the record, so it was good. There were lots and lots of lineup changes in Malevolent creation history. Why? Um, you know, it's, it's. I don't know. A lot of people, you know, like when they get into this business, they don't realize how much work really is involved in touring and traveling. Not a lot of people can handle it, and uh, you know, unfortunately, we did. We had some pro really bad luck with drummers for over over the years, you know. But uh, and uh, you know, <laughs> it's just it's it's just something that happens. I mean, there, but you you know, any time that we've had a problem with any member and we felt that he wasn't going to give 100% anymore, we'd replace him with somebody that would, you know. And you never can tell how long someone's willing to you know give 100% and. You know, if they're not going to give 100%, then it's really no use in having them in the band. So, you know, we do what we can to make, you know, to move forward and keep the music, you know, keep it intense. We don't want to go backwards. <laughs> we want to move forwards. And if we have to replace members to do that, then that's what we do. The Will to Kill is your newest album released for Nuclear Blast. Would you tell us something more about this new album? Well, uh, you know, for us, it's a bit of a breath of fresh air, you know, we, we've struggled for years, you know, working with our original vocalist, Brett Hoffman, and trying to, you know, straighten him out and get uh, his life straightened out and get him dedicated more to the band, but uh, unfortunately it didn't work, and with this new album we replaced him with uh, vocalist for Hate Plow, Kyle Simons, who's, you know, one of my best friends, and we always knew that if he was the singer for Malevolent, we would eliminate a lot of problems and you know and a lot of bullshit so uh you know having uh doing this new album you know was uh was great for us because it was a lot easier to do you know to to do the record with a vocalist that you know gives a hundred percent man and really you know loves this kind of music you can tell you know what i mean you could hear it in his voice and uh you know doing uh working a deal out with nuclear blast uh was great for us because uh over the years, we've had a lot of problems with European uh, record companies and mm -hmm. distribution companies, and uh, you know we uh, had a lot of problems. And we figured, you know, Nuclear Blast is one of the biggest, best labels. And if they're, you know, if we're gonna, if we're going to have problems or if we're going to get ripped off, we may as well get ripped off by the biggest <laughs> and the best. You know, they give us great promotion. We have a good relationship with them. They, you know, they do a lot of work for us more than any label ever has in Europe. So. Hopefully we'll be able to continue with them and record some more albums for them.
That's great. That's great. Someone said you were a Mike Tyson of death metal. What do you think about that? I've heard this before too, but uh, in a sense it's true because, uh, you know, just like Mike Tyson, <laughs> you know, every time we, uh, things go bad for us, we return and, uh, you know, try to come back fighting every time. So, <laughs> in a sense, I, I guess it is true. You're on tour with Immolation and Marduk right now, Mike. Uh, well, you know, we've known Immolation since our demos, you know what I mean? We used to trade demo tapes and stuff like that. And, you know, we've obviously we've played shows with them guys and we've always, you know, had a good relationship with those guys. So, uh, you know, it's great opportunity, man, to tour Europe with your friends it makes it a lot easier. And um, the guys in Marduk are great guys, too. You know, we are, you know, the guys in my band, Malevolent Creation, you know, we're always like Marduk. We think they're a great band, you know, we love extreme bands and they're one of the most extreme in black metal and it's really cool, you know, touring with them, man. You know, it's a... Uh, it's an extreme package, you know, there's a lot of speedy bands, <laughs> it's perfect for us. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, we're having a great time. You came from Florida, the place which brings to mind sea sand and uh, blonde girls. Why do you choose to play dark, very aggressive music? Well, we've always... You know, before we moved to Florida, that's what we did. You know, we we grew up listening to bands like Venom and Slayer and Exodus and Destruction and Creator, and those were the bands that influenced us. And they were all dark and extreme bands. You know, and uh, our goal when we started our band in 1987 was to, you know, to be like those bands, but maybe to even go further. You know, try to make it more more extreme, more heavier. So uh, you know. That's exactly what we're trying to do to this day. We still, you know, you can hear the influences of those bands still in our music now, you know. By the way, where do you find inspirations when you write music? Well, uh, you know, I mean, uh, I always play music, you know what I mean? And, and I, I get inspired a lot by listening to a lot of my older records, you know, from when I was a kid. I still could put on an Iron Maiden album or a Judas Priest album, you know, and go, man, you know, this is why I love, you know, playing music. And, you know, even though our music may not sound, you know, like Judas Priest or Iron Maiden, you know what I mean? Uh, it's still along the same lines, you know, just a more intense, maybe, style, you know, of metal. And, uh, you know, that it always influences me, you know, especially when I see Judas Priest and Iron Maiden now. These guys are older, as old as my father, <laughs> you know, and I, when too. I see these videos and watch these guys, I just, I, you know, to me, I go, man, these guys are, you know, 50 something years old and they still kick ass. <laughs> and it really inspires me because, you know, I'm, <laughs> I feel like, my God, <laughs> they're that much older than me, man. I, I should be able to keep doing this, you know, I, so uh, it's, uh, it's inspiring to see stuff like that for sure. Mm -hmm. And which five albums will be your Desert Island albums? Oh, I would have to say uh, Darkness Descends by Dark Angel, Hell Awaits by Slayer, uh, Ride the Lightning by Metallica, Don't Break the Oath by uh, Merciful, Fate, Merciful Fate, and for sure uh, Pleasure to Kill by a Creator. Uh, what is most important in music? Most important? Uh, for my band? Yes. Well, the most important is, to, you know, that the music, is that, is that we're happy with the music and we're just not doing it, you know, just to do it or try to make money or just, you know, we, we really, you know, it comes from our hearts when we play, man. I mean, it might sound strange to say that because, you know, we're pretty normal people, but musically, man, uh, when, you know, that's what we're all about is just uh, intensity, man. It's just we want to, you know, it's really how we we want to come across. We would, I would hate to release a record that I wasn't happy with, you know. I, so that's what music means to me is, is being, you know, being real, you know, keep being who you really are and not be, you know, fake. 
you know, do something just to, because it's popular. Mm -hmm. We've always done this, so it's nothing different for us. How do you imagine the future of death metal? Well, I mean, just by doing these, you know, releasing this new album and touring the U.S. and touring it now here in Europe, man, I mean, it seems like, you know, death metal is doing really good for underground music. It's been, you know, it's, it's great. Maybe a mid-90s, you know, kind of slowed down and, you know, like a lot more people were interested in black metal because that was new, you know, and interesting. But uh, it seems like it's come full circle almost and, you know, a lot of black metal and death metal bands tour together now and it's uh you know there's more unity and stuff like that in it and uh, and what impression bands like Slipknot makes on you uh well i could say i mean they actually i know the guys and we've met them before and they're uh they're like a lot of them are death metal fans and uh, that's how we met them and uh we hung out with them guys for, for a couple of days uh when they were in florida uh with the out for the oz fest and stuff and partied with them guys and i mean they don't influence our band you know <laughs> at all but i have to say i never after seeing them live and i've never really listened to their records i was really impressed that nine guys could be that <laughs> extreme and that intense on stage yes. so i really respect that you know i mean it's you know, not my thing. I don't think I'll ever be running around with a mask on or anything like <laughs> that. But, it, you know, they came up with a great gimmick, you know, a great thing. And, you know, their music, uh, you know, it uh, appeals to a lot of different people. You know, a lot of death metal people can like it and a lot of younger kids like it, you know, and stuff like that. So, I mean, they don't influence me in any way, but, uh, you know, they're, they're a great band for what they are, that's for sure. <laughs> Plans for the future? Uh, well, we finished this tour and um, we come back to Germany for uh, the Wacken Open Air Festival and we're doing a uh, couple weeks worth of shows and now uh, we headline the Party Sands Open Air Festival in Germany the week after Wacken. Then we go home and we go to South America. Then we come back home and we do a U.S. tour. Mm -hmm. We take a break for about a month and then we come back to Europe again in November for a headlining tour. And then hopefully after that, new record. New record and <laughs> yeah. tour. And more tours. Okay. Thank you very much. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Once again, Malevolent Creation was, found, um, was founded in Buffalo, it was 1987. Then you moved to Florida. Why? To be closer to such bands as Decide or Morbid Angel? Um, you'd have to ask Phil that, but he moved down basically because it was time for him to leave Buffalo, like legal problems. So he moved down, his father, his family, they lived down there. So he just went to Florida. Really didn't have anything to do with bands or anything. Yeah, yeah. It was uh yeah, it was like early on, like they still had a band up in Buffalo and stuff like that, but he had to do it for his own personal reasons. So uh but then the band followed down there cuz he they found out, you know, how great a place Florida was, you know, weather and everything. And, um then they all followed down then the band got uh reformed again and everything like that. In the end of the 80s you signed a deal with Roadrunner Records. The first effect of this cooperation was the Ten Commandments, released in 1991. Do you still listen to that album? Uh, I, I do occasionally. I mean, um, I listen to more of uh, like, if there's a Malevolent album, I listen to a lot. It's uh, either the new one, The Will to Kill, or Eternal. Those are the ones I really listen to a lot, but I occasionally throw it on. I listen to it maybe once a year. 
<laughs> if I forget how to play one of the songs that we're playing. <laughs> uh, Retribution was the second album for Roadrunner. Would you tell me something more about this album? Uh, Retribution, it's uh, uh, it was recorded in about like a week in uh, Criteria Studios down in Miami. Uh, I think it's one of the best death metal records out there. It's got a lot of, uh, it's just got that vibe in it, you know, that murderous vibe that, you know, is not on a lot of death metal records. And um, let me see, I, I just know that it's been, rec it was recorded seven days and uh, everything came out great. I think it's a classic in death metal. Yeah, I think it's a good one. <laughs> okay. Steelburn was the end of the cooperation with Roadrunner. Why? Uh, Cause they're uh, greedy. Man, uh, they're just, uh, they're very greedy. And uh, that, I think that's about the time when, um, uh, like, all this, uh, their, a couple of their bands started getting, like, real huge, like Sepultura, mm -hmm. Typo Negative. And, uh, you know, they tried to focus more on that and, they, you know, they left, they dropped a lot of death metal bands and and also the album was kind of tired too, you know, and Brett wasn't sounding his best and neither was Alex. Just, uh, that album wasn't, you know, put together as well as the previous ones. And uh, I think uh, they just had a lot of arguments and that was it. <clears throat> But you've got a new album, The Will to Kill. Yeah. Would you tell us something more about this record? Mm, it was a pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Just technical problems in the studio lightning storms during recording process that we'd have to like stop uh, power outages yeah um what else happened and during that day oh yeah there's like no air condition where you record so like i do like you know one shot of vocals and then like be sweating my ass off and this and that take a break <laughs> and you know it's it just like everybody was on like high nerve you know like ready to explode and finally uh I think you could tell from listening to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were all angry at each other just because we were trying to push each other to get it the best it possibly could. And uh, yeah, we had to take like a couple weeks off of not listening to anything, or at least I did. I didn't listen to shit afterwards. Fucking that album, no albums, nothing, no music. I fucking read a lot. <laughs> but I, we're very happy with the finished product. Okay, it's a great album. Uh, who is most responsible for the composition? Phil the writes side. most of the songs. Yeah. He'll write uh, like the skeleton of a song and then we'll add in our part to it. But uh, there's a couple songs that we wrote together. And there's three songs that I wrote by myself. So it's all, everybody pitches in. You know? yeah. And how the process of creation looks like in the studio? Um, it's like a fucking madhouse from the last time. <laughs> well, it's drums first, and then uh, guitars, and then the bass, and then vocals. Yeah. And then the happy fun mixing time. <laughs> You're playing a European uh, tour right now. Mm -hmm. Yes. This is the first show. This is yeah. This is the first show. Yes. <laughs> what can we expect from this show in Metalmania? Oh, uh, well, I guess we'll have to wait and see. We don't know yet. Anything <laughs> goes. It's a free for all. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Like I said, we just got. I just got out of the bus and into the backstage, and then I came here. So I haven't really checked out anything yet. It's gonna be a Polska rumble. <laughs> Okay. Someone said you were Mike Tyson of death metal. That was an old quote when Mike Tyson used to kick ass. We, we don't bite. <laughs> we don't bite people. 
Well, he still kicks ass. He would kick my ass. Oh, oh definitely. He would kick all of our Hell asses. Yeah, at once. What? <laughs> Sorry, do you know our fighter, Andre Golota? Yeah. Yeah. The ball puncher. He's great there. <laughs> he, got Riddick, one. he got Riddick Bow in the nuts a few times in that <laughs> fight. <laughs> he gets a little excited. Yeah. He's good, though, man. He's good. He just he gets... <laughs> at least he's not biting people's ears off and yeah. stuff. Yeah. That's wrong. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's just, well, boxing's like, you know, like, they try to pick out, like, since boxing really, like, sucks nowadays in America, they, you know, they just want something for a show. So, like, you know, if Tyson will box, they'll be like, oh, what will he do next? And, you know, the same thing goes with Andre Galan. And, mm -hmm. So. <laughs> Metal. Leveling creation. And shitload of other bands that we enjoy. It's uh it's something that uh it's good stuff. <laughs> it's something that some people can't get into, don't want to get into, but there's a select few that enjoy it and are into it and including ourselves and that's what we play it for. It's free therapy. What keeps you alive? <clears throat> the will to kill. <laughs> <laughs> you came from Florida, the place which brings to mind <clears throat> sea, sand and girls. But uh, you are playing very dark, very aggressive music. Why? It's two extremes. Yeah, I enjoy like, you know, it's like just because I, I live there, it doesn't mean like I sleep a lot, so I just sit in my room in the dark and everything. So it's not mm -hmm. like I, I mean I don't have a floor to tan, and I've like <laughs> so it's yeah, not we're like pretty a, white. Yeah, <laughs> I see. Yeah, we're we're not going out to the beach too many times, but uh, it's uh, you know it, like you said, it's just two extremes. Like you know, sometimes I do like to go out to the beach and enjoy it, but you know, it's uh, it doesn't fuel the music. I like I Florida because the gun laws are real good. There were lots and lots of lineup changes in Malevolent Creation. Yeah, you have to, <clears throat> if somebody's being a, like a, what's the word, a liability, then they have to go. <laughs> yeah. You have to keep the machine rolling, the tank must go forward. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we don't need any roadblocks, you know, <clears throat> unfortunately sometimes you find out who is one on the road, then you have to terminate that one and find someone else who has the ability and has the will to play, you know. when you write music? It's mostly war and killing, murder, crime, drug abuse. True crime, yeah, drug abuse. <laughs> <laughs> Drugs. <laughs> Things that are controversial, but that, that happen every day. Yeah, that are real. It's reality. Yeah. I enjoy more the reality <clears throat> side of like writing lyrics and you know, like, you know, the fake side made up and stuff like that. And it's not something I don't, uh, it's something that I don't like to write. I can get into it, but. There's more popular bands that are, that's their thing, and yeah. nobody's gonna top them. Yeah. So. The world went crazy. Uh, you are Americans. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the war in Iraq? It happens. Yeah. 
it's gonna happen. War happens. You know, it's a. Uh, um, you know, I I can't really um, say too much about it because uh, I haven't really followed up on like you know like the real reasons like you know this and that. But it's oil, oil. yeah, basically <laughs> the Gulf War. Yeah. <laughs> but it's you know it's it's happening now and you know it's you know I got you know I got friends and family over there right now and I don't like to see them over there doing it but you know they're in the army so you know that's what they do and uh, I just hope that uh, you know all our allies uh, return home as many as they can return home safe you know when this is over in fact I haven't even heard more shit about that I'm used to watching MSNBC right about now I'm gonna get some TV kicking if they have one of that bus okay anyway <laughs> <laughs> what impression does bands like Slipknot uh, make on you? None. Uh, I, I don't know. I got their last album. It's it's good to see that a heavier side of music is getting more widespread to people. Um, you know they you know they're like a little they're like a lot more heavier. Like this new album, I don't think it has too much MTV airplay or whatever airplay. At least in the states, it doesn't. But it's still, it's good to see like a lot of a lot of people at their shows and stuff like that. It just means more people are getting to the heavier side of music. I like the band Body Pit that Mick used to be in. They're a death metal band. The bass player and the guitar player. They used to be in Body Pit. <laughs> they were good. Who was an anal blast? Uh, that drummer, Corey is his name or something. Oh, yeah. No, that's a singer. Corey is a singer. Yeah. Joey? Yeah. Who's in yeah. the Murder Dolls, too, now? Fucking everybody's yeah. in a, yeah, this band and that band. Stone Sore and Marty Dolls. Yeah. yeah. I think he used to be in a band called Anal Blast too. <laughs> or a week or two. <laughs> How do you imagine the future of death metal? Well, as long as we're still alive, it'll still keep going. Yeah, I don't see it. You know, I don't see us stopping anytime soon. You know, hopefully. I'll, I'll hold the flag by myself <laughs> till I die. <laughs> I mean. I enjoy all different types of music, but metal is my main, my main thing, and uh, you know, I don't see putting away it for a long time. I hope that uh, even more fans come to it. You know, it's like it's had its ups and downs over the last ten years. Hopefully, yeah. It's and come a long way. You know, you know shitload of bands out there, man. So there's a lot of people that are into it. It's lasting it, longer than disco. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Plans for the future? Just keep killing. Yeah, stab, stab, stab. So the will to kill. Of course. Yeah, <clears throat> play as many shows as we can, get our name out there, put out more CDs. Come back to Polska, come back there everywhere we can, play as much as we can, beat it into their fucking heads, and you know, we're not going anywhere, so you know, they're either gonna like us or be sick of us, so that's about it. Yeah.